I thought I'd show you some more hints and tips on doing actual tree trunks and branches. So I've got a few colours here. Raw Sienna, Sap Green, Cobalt Blue and a dark brown which is Sepia. I'm going to start with a brush loaded with water and I'm dabbing into some Raw Sienna and I'm going to pop on the tree trunk. So there's plenty of water on my brush. As you come upwards, your tree gets narrower. And at the bottom, it's really nice to just have this jaggedy bottom that's going into the ground. So that was with a round number 10. I'm going to swap down to a round brush number six. And I'll pop some more colour in. So whilst it's still nice and wet, I'm going to pop some green in. So this is sap green and it gives a nice sort of mossy effect. And then I'm going to dab into some cobalt blue. Just pop that down one side. I'm just letting the paint do its thing. It's moving around, it's doing its own thing. And then dabbing into some sepia. I've got less water on my brush now. The sepia is a dark brown. And I'm going to come along this edge of the tree. So this is a darker side of the tree. I've decided this is going to be the darker side. And I'm just touching the very edge and letting the paint run in. Bring a little bit more down towards the bottom. Because the paint's nice and thick, it won't run too far. And I'm gonna come in this side, and very lightly touch into the edge here. In some places, if you apply more pressure or dab multiple times, you'll get a nice sort of varied effect. So naturally now we've got a dark side to the tree and a lighter side to the tree. So in one of my other videos, I showed you how you can use a little bit of chopped up bank card or credit card I've got here to actually indent the tree trunk and you can still do that whilst it's wet you can come in and indent but it's just putting a slight amount of pressure on and you'll get a craggy effect and the paint will run into those indents and it will go darker it's really effective on large tree trunks what you can also do is use the flat of the card to scrape around. So if I show you this, this works particularly well for getting lighter areas. You're going to put the flat down and scrape. The flat down and scrape. You'll see I'm doing an arch, or a slight little arch as I'm doing this. I'm going to get that lovely highlight appearing on the tree. If it's too wet, it runs back. So then you've got to wait a few seconds and try again. I'll, f I'll try further up. So it's fine there. If it doesn't do anything at all, then it's too dry. You've just got to wait till the perfect time to do this and it's just about practice and trying. See there, I've got a really nice highlight on that tree. So I'm going to come back to my number six 
and the sepia. And then I can start to just bring out some branches. So if you vary the pressure you apply on the brush and lift it very gently as you go, you'll get a really nice effect. Always alternate where the branches are coming out. So don't put them at the same spot. You want it to look non-uniform. So always try and do them in a different place. I wouldn't do it exactly there. I'd come up a little bit and do one there. Once you've used your number six, you then move down. So I'm using a rigger now. A rigger is a long, thin brush that's really good for doing strokes, for doing branches, for doing grasses, resting on my little finger. And I can just pull from here and get finer and finer. And this is a number two rigger. So you don't need to go too fine to get that fine detail. It's just a case of using the pressure of the brush to do that. It's always nice to have a few little wispy bits coming out. And this is just all with the dark brown now. You get these little flicky bits at the ends of the branches. On the other video I go through how to dry brush to get some foliage on the ends. I've got lots of little videos about trees and branches now. And I've still got lots more tips to show you. So I'm just pulling these out. It's always nice to have one going in a different direction as well. And it's just really effective because you've got this really nice highlight along the, the tree trunk there. What I will do just to finish off the bottom is just, I'm going to add a little bit of water just at this bottom edge. You always want to, to pop some sort of shadow down to ground the tree. If you're doing this within a landscape, you'd have a sky, you'd have distant trees. You might even have a road. So this is really just to show you how I would approach a tree within a landscape. But it's, I'm popping a little bit of grass down here. And then you just want a darker colour. And that was with the green that I've gotten in. And you can just pop a little bit of shadow. So if I just come in with the brown and pop a little bit of shadow here, and that's going to spread because it's in the wet paint, it's just going to ground this tree a little bit. So it doesn't feel and then this this jaggedy bottom it just comes into the grass at the bottom 